in ghetto, there was a creation of of a certain, call it a communist uh, movement. And some of the leaders in the communist movement, some of them were very good friends of mine that we went to school together. Uh, they they organized, and particular our resort was excellent to it, that we did what we would call it here in the United States, like slow down strikes. Uh, when the management wanted us to do 10 pieces a day, we would do only two. And, uh, and we realized that the management would be afraid to do anything to us because if they openly would say that, hey, you've got a slowdown strike, they would be punished by the Germans. So in a way we were playing them against the Germans and we are saving our lives by very low production. So uh, I, I say this because in many instances I heard so many times being said that uh, the Jews didn't do anything. Uh, they went like a sheep to the, uh, to the uh, ovens. But it's not true because this was also a resistance. Resistance does not have to be with a gun and a bullet. As a matter of fact, sometimes the easiest resistance is with a gun and a bullet. But many times the consequences of taking a gun and shooting a German would be that they would take 100 other people and kill them. So that would not accomplish much. But a resistance like this is a resistance. A resistance when a mother gave a piece of bread to the child so that he could survive, it is a resistance. <coughs> a resistance was in the Lodge Ghetto that we had symphony orchestra. And this orchestra played and it was called. But by playing in Ghetto, they gave the people the will to live another day and another day and another day. Yes, it was maybe not legal, but it was a resistance. A teacher that was teaching the children in ghetto, it was resistance, it was illegal. So that there are many other forms of, of resistance which is spiritual and moral and so on.